All right, and we are here. Hello, everyone. I think that the room just opened up for our getting started with Lima Charlie webcast. So hopefully everyone has been able to jump in. Um, everyone's been able to see what's going on. I'm going to ask my team a for a quick AV check to make sure that they can hear and see me just fine. Hopefully they can. But hello, hello to everyone who's joining. Thank you so much for being here. All right, heard and seen, hopefully loud and clear. If you all got that pun, then we're starting off in a really, really good way. All right, awesome. Well, with that said, thanks everyone for being here for the uh, kind of inaugural, if you will, getting started with Lima Charlie event. Uh, this is the very first in a series of kind of educational webinars that we're gonna be doing, getting you familiar with and introducing you to Lima Charlie. Very, very excited to have everyone here. Uh, we're currently, uh, it looks like the number's growing up. So um, by the number, but what I mean is we've got quite a few folks joining and watching. So again, thank you to everyone who's joining here. These types of sessions will be recorded and will be made available at a later time. So if you've got someone on your team who might need to see this or you think would love an introduction to Lima Charlie or really needs to hear some of the things that I go over and, and cover today, uh, would absolutely love to, you know, make sure you've passed this on and get them involved in our next webinars as well, because we're going to be running a lot of these in the future and as time goes on. So with that being said, my name is Matt Bromley, everyone. I'm the lead solutions engineer over here at Lima Charlie. And today I'm going to be walking you through kind of getting started with the platform, uh, what it means to get started with Lima Charlie, what it means to be in the platform, um, how we look at certain data types and things like that. And we've got this slotted for an hour. I'm not sure if we'll go the full hour or not. Depends on how much content we go through. But I would love it if you all were as interactive as you want it to be. So really quick note, you're going to see my eyes kind of moving around the screen. I've got a great big monitor that I use for these types of presentations. And I've got a few different things to keep an eye on here as I'm looking through them. The first one is I'm going to keep an eye on our chat, the chat room associated with this particular webcast today. I'm also going to be keeping an eye on the Slack that is up as well. Um, but, uh, you know, if you've got some questions or anything you'd like to, to bring up, something you'd like us to talk about, by all means, certainly surface those for us. Would would love to, uh, to hear what you have to say. Um, and I'll keep an eye on these as best as I can. But I'm also going to be sharing my screen and walking through some different uh, facets and different things about Lima Charlie. So you'll see me kind of looking and, and, and navigating around through that as well. But this is meant to be as beneficial as you'd like it to be. Stay involved, throw us questions. And last but not least, uh, if something comes to you after the fact, or there's maybe a question you didn't want to ask, or you didn't want to ask publicly, you can, of course, always reach out to us on our community Slack. In case you hear me say Slack, I think three or four times now, and you're kind of wondering, wait, wait, what exactly is Matt talking about? We do have a community Slack available that we would love everyone and anyone to jump into. And I went ahead and dropped that link into the chat for us. It's slack.limacharlie.io. Our community Slack is currently a little, almost 700 members strong. I take that back, sorry, almost 850 members strong. A few of you are not in announcements, which is interesting, but almost 850 members strong. And it's a great place to get in touch with other folks utilizing Lima Charlie to see how are they using this? What types of use cases have they built? Um, what other types of things are people exploring? I will say in the past couple of days, there's been an interesting discussion about chat GPT and Lima Charlie being brought together. So, you know, those are the types of things that I think would be great for community discussion. But that being said, uh, you know, feel free to stay in touch with us and stay engaged as much as you'd like to. We'd love to hear any and everything you have to bring to the team. But with that started, or that said, let's go ahead and get started in the getting started with Lima Charlie approach. Now, I'm going to be sharing a, a window up here uh, for everyone. Full note, I'm going to walk through some of the initial kind of setup and startup things for Lima Charlie. Um, I don't know if I'll be doing it at a pace where you can necessarily follow along. What I mean by that is I'm not going to say something and then pause and wait for general consensus and then keep moving through. Instead, I'm going to move through things at a pace that if you were to watch and repeat this, you could pause and kind of go along. But if you want to follow along live, it's actually you're going to see really easy to follow along live as well. And that is one of the inherent points that I want to make sure again gets covered as we talk about Lima Charlie as a platform. Folks, it is ridiculously easy for us to get started. And you're going to see just what that looks like here in just a moment. All right. So with that said, let me go ahead and share out uh, one of my screens here. 
and there we go. All right, hopefully this will this will stay where I need it to be, but we'll see what happens. All right, perfect. So I'm on my first initial screen here. Hopefully everyone can see what I'm sharing. If you cannot, if you're having issues, throw me in the throw me a message in the chat and let me know. But otherwise, I'm going to continue moving on as hopefully everyone can see this. This is our initial login screen. Now, the, we obviously do have, of course, our lemacharlie.io website. If you wanted to jump in there and learn more about Lima Charlie itself, we are a cybersecurity middleware platform that gives you, our users, full control and visibility over whatever it is you want to do from a security perspective. We've got a platform that I think allows you to build what I call the security program of your dreams, the security program you've always wanted. Here's what I think's happened. Over the past multitude of years, you can pick a number, three, five, seven, ten 10 years. We've seen this really big growth in security teams inside of organizations. And it's been due to a couple of different factors, but now we've got teams, lots of folks have been through training, lots of folks, uh, we've, we've seen teams with detection engineering capabilities, red team and blue teams working together, purple teaming, all sorts of technological integrations, capabilities, networks are getting bigger, networks are getting more complex. And there's been some really, really great advancements in kind of what the security team is able to do. But one thing that we've always had an issue with here at Lima Charlie has been, you can have the most talented team in the world doing some of the most amazing work that's out there. But unfortunately, sometimes you're left with, uh, I'm going to say a kind of, you know, hidden approach towards security, meaning perhaps you're relying on a tool set or a toolkit where you don't really have control over the telemetry or the detections. As a blue team or as a SOC analyst, as a security analyst, you're simply responding to alerts, maybe not necessarily understanding the genesis of where they're coming from. Or perhaps you want more out of your environment, meaning your security team has spent years understanding and knowing how the environment has grown and how things have changed but now you want to get more hands-on you want to get to a point where you can understand the very unique things that users are doing that applications are doing that programs are doing that the cloud providers are doing all sorts of different possible what ifs inside of your organization i'd say along those along that spectrum and more is what we built Lima Charlie for is, is we built it along the lines of we want to be able to give you as much control and transparency into your security posture as possible Hopefully you're here because you already caught that part. You already caught that introduction and you're kind of like, wait, what is this thing? What do we, how do we get into this thing a little bit further? We've got some really, really good kind of walkthroughs and discussion points here about different things you can use Lima Charlie for, but you're going to hear me walk through a lot of these as we get into the platform and kind of start to walk through things. But I want to drill home or make sure everyone walks away with that particular initial starting point that I said is control and visibility. I want you to have as much control over your environment as your security team needs. And I want you to have as much visibility into what's happening as your team needs as well. And when I give you control and visibility, you can start to build the type of security approach or the security team if you want, as you know, in whatever manner you need to. We can get as hands on or as hands off as we need to. With control and with visibility comes the ability to then scale and augment as much as I need to. I can start to ask my team questions like how much do we want to automate? How much do we want to make manual? How much do we want to pass off to additional automation platforms? How much do I want to bring data into one location versus having it in multiple locations? How do we want to build case flows? How do we want to respond to incidents? How do we want to do all these things that we may not have been able to do before? Or maybe I don't have the best answer to these questions from before. And without me continuing to be too vague, that's exactly what we want you to take away from this today is, wow, Lima Charlie is a platform I can use to start to answer those particular questions. Now, you notice as we've been going through this, I've been kind of scrolling down through the website just as kind of not background material necessarily, but to kind of get you thinking about some different use cases and ways that you might use the platform as well. I like to hover on this particular point right here because it plants that initial seed for what I consider to be success for any security program that's out there, regardless of age, maturity, number of uh, employees, skill set, things like that. And that is the idea of, uh, of telemetry, the idea of understanding and seeing what's going on inside of your environment. Call it signal, call it telemetry, call it logs, call it uh, whatever you want to go through and call it. I'm going to use that parent category term of telemetry as 
things coming in from my environment that I can use to then make decisions on. And that is going to be my bucket classification of telemetry. Now, when we get to that concept of telemetry, when I get to that idea of data that allows me to make informed actions, informed choices, informed decisions, we then want to get to, well, how much data do I need to make informed decisions? And this is another area where at Lima Charlie, we say, how much do you feel comfortable with? How much data do you want to bring in? What does your footprint look like? These are all the sorts of questions. And this graph that I've got highlighted here is a really good way to kind of assess that. How much data do we need to bring in to make those informed decisions? Imagine a security team that for years has kind of been making decisions based on endpoint data only. Now, there's lots of different resources out there. And I know personally, I've written quite a few resources that talk about the ability to combine different telemetry sets for higher fidelity detections, for better understanding of your environment and things like that. But really, I want to turn the question back around and say, how much telemetry do you need to make informed decisions? And if you're already at a point, could you make better decisions with more telemetry or with more decision points in front of you? And that is really one of the first things that you need to consider whenever you get into a platform like Lima Charlie is how much data do I want to bring in here? The reason I bring this up and the reason I'm starting with this uh, before I jump into the web app and just start clicking around through buttons and things like that is because when I say to you, any data you want can be brought in, it really opens up the field for, well, wait, how much data do we have? And this is where I feel like a security program or a security platform should make your team ask questions like this. How much data do we have? What data do we use to make actionable decisions? Is it the highest fidelity data we've got? Is it the best data to make those decisions on? And then finally, is there anything better out there? And why don't we have it all in one place? And that's what the goal of this platform is. That's what the goal of Lima Charlie is. And if you notice at one point, or sorry, you should notice at no point did I ever men mention a specific vendor or mention any sort of specific log source or exclude any specific vendor or exclude any specific log source. And one of the nice things here is while today you're going to see me talk about EDR technologies and endpoint detection and response, which is what EDR stands for, endpoint detection and response capabilities. And you're going to see me talk about some of the different types of feature sets we've got in our platform here. At the end of the day, Take a look at the left-hand side of this screen I've got up here. We're a vendor agnostic platform, which means you can bring any and all data that helps your security team make decisions into Lima Charlie. And if you prefer to use us as a place to bring all of your third-party EDR telemetry in to make an informed decision, by all means, go for it. That's our goal. And when I talk to you about visibility and control and transparency, that's what I mean by transparency bring it all into the table. My goal from you for you all today is to think, how can I use this platform to make more informed decisions? That's it. Not, is this the better this or the worse that? Not comparisons one by one, but more of how can I make more informed decisions? How can I get better data in one point? And can Lima Charlie get me there? And I promise you 99.9% .9 of the time, the answer is we absolutely can. And I'm going to show you exactly how we can go through doing that. All right. So let's start digging into the platform and let's start drilling into kind of what this looks like here. So first and foremost, the first thing you need to get started with Lima Charlie, and hopefully you can kind of pick up from this screen what that looks like, is going to be an account. Uh, an account to get started with, something to log in with. We do have a few different options. We do have some SSO built in. You can tie in your Google, GitHub, or Microsoft account if you want to. You can also just go ahead and sign up with an email straight off the bat. Quick note, when you sign up for an account, you are jumping into what is essentially known as our free tier. Our free tier at Lima Charlie is everyone's starting point. That is the place where you will start out, as I mentioned, and there will be some very initial things that are the same for every single person who's out there. So I'm going to quickly drop in some credentials that I've got so that we can walk through this here. And we're going to use this uh, to our advantage. All right. So jumping in now, all I did is I created an account and use it with an email to sign up with. Uh, as I mentioned, you could certainly use any sort of SSO tie-in if you wanted to, but this is a bare bones Lima Charlie account right here, right now. 
I've got one organization created. I'm going to talk about what that looks like in just a moment. But when you log in for the very first time, assuming you've got no pre-configurations determined, you'll be on this initial page right here. You'll be looking at organizations. Now let's talk about this breakdown for a little bit. So by default, Lima Charlie is multi-tenant by default. Again, when you get started, you will be given a blank slate, assuming no pre-configurations. With that blank slate, the first thing we're going to want to do is create an organization. And an organization, for all intents and purposes, folks, is a logical structure. Now, there is some data center stuff on the back end, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But it's a logical structure to help you coalesce and bring together all the different things about a single organization. Now, when we think organization, usually for a lot of you, it might be one individual company. So let's say you work on an enterprise security team. You're going to have one organization in there. And we'll talk about why in, in, in a few minutes as to why that might be. But let's say you're on the managed security side. Let's say you're on the managed security side and you've got multiple customers that you provide services for, or you're a consultant or you do incident response or something like that. Uh, in this case, you're going to have organizations set up for every single customer that you might do work for. The reason why this is an important setup and an important understanding is really twofold. The first is it gives you, as I mentioned, that logical kind of boundary in between data at different organizations. And not only do you get the ability to drop in certain things like names. So let's just say I was performing, uh, I was performing work for Stark Industries, obviously a fictional company, but let's say I was performing work for Stark Industries and I was performing Stark work for Stark Industries and their European offices. I actually have the ability inside of my organization set up here to go through and determine where my data is. That's the first big reason for an organization setup. Now, as I've been talking about this, hopefully you've started to look through and realize, oh, wait a second, let's see exactly what else we've got inside of our organization setup here. We're going to be setting up a name. We're going to be determining where in the world that data is going to be stored. And we're also going to be determining a different plan behind it as well. I'm going to tell everyone getting started for the very first time, start with general. That's going to be the best approach for you. We've got a couple of other capabilities here. We've got the ability to drop some demo data in there if you'd like to, so that way you can start to get a feel for what the platform looks like. And we've also got some pre-built configurations dropped in as well. This is the first area where as a user, Lima Charlie becomes your templatized or your infrastructure as code approach going forward. Now, two roads here, everyone. We're at a fork in the road. If you are just getting started and you're wanting to play around with Lima Charlie for the very first time, this is all you need right here. Create a name, put that data in a certain region and click create organization and you're done. If you wanted to go a little bit further and explore and say, well, let me see what this setup looks like. What happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? Matt, what are those template things that you talk about? This is where you get the ability to customize how that organization gets set up based on the various things that you might need. This is one of my favorite parts about the platform. Notice. We're not anywhere near any code right now. We are just setting up an initial organization to get started. And already my security team or my security brain is starting to think about the different things that we're looking for. All right. So I'm checking the chat really quick and I'm hearing that I might not be sharing the right screen. Um, give me one second. All right, I'm not sure what folks are seeing. Can anyone confirm for me that they're seeing the create a new organization window or am I just speaking to, all right. So I've got some folks saying they can't see it. Some folks saying they can. So for those of you who can see it, you're following along just fine. For those of you who can't, I'm not sure um, if the webcast froze for you or not, but um, I'm seeing a lot of folks who can see it in line. So I'm gonna continue with that. All right, perfect. So I'm going to keep walking through this for anyone who might be having issues, maybe refresh um, or, or rejoin. I'm not sure why the screen would be frozen for you, but we've got lots of folks seeing it there. So with that said, um, anyways, the, the templatized part of creating a new organization is where you can start to determine how you want that organization to look ahead of time. Meaning I may have an organization and again, considering the different types of organization, different types of setup that you might have here, maybe I'm gonna create an organization for incident response purposes, which means I've got a customer that I'm working with who is going into incident response and it's not gonna be 24 seven SOC monitoring, it's gonna be incident response for a six, seven, eight week engagement. Very, very different parameters 
It is a very short-term engagement versus a very long-term engagement. The other thing that I'll mention here, for anyone here who has not been in an incident response role before, in an incident response capacity, we usually turn the dial up to 11 for everything. I want as much stuff, for lack of a better term, as you can possibly give me. I want all my detections turned on. I want every rule set. I want everything out there to be up and running because I need to go find evil. I need to go find bad people inside of this environment. Or perhaps you're saying, you know what? I'm about to kick off Lima Charlie for a 24-7, 365 SOC monitoring engagement, which means I've got a year of visibility into this organization. I'm going to want to control things and set them up a little bit differently. I'm going to come back to templates a little bit later, but I want to start to plant that seed. I want to start to plant that idea of you thinking about how, how, what types of things do I need in my security organization and setting up a new organization here? What types of services, feature sets, tools, functionalities, and whatnot do I need? And if you don't know those ahead of time, or you just want to get familiar with Lima Charlie, by all means, like I said, name, data residency, click off, and we'll get started. And with a click of a button and a little bit of things there, we've got about a 30 second wait while this particular organization is being created on the back end. Without going too much into it, what's happening is that logical container, that logical setup, I'm not using container in like the Docker sense, but more in a mental sense here, that logical boundary is being set up. I've now got a separate organization, data being housed inside of the EU residency region. So I've got data sovereignty in place and I've now got an organization ready to go. That's it. In 30 seconds, or actually less, it was probably more like nine to 10 seconds. I've got a brand new organization set up. Notice the green at the top, Stark Industries is ready to rock and roll. Let's hop back. Remember earlier, I already had this lab one set up earlier. Stark Industries is now an organization that I've got access to. So now I'm running two organizations. The lab is housed in the US. Stark Industries is over in Europe. I've got different data sovereignty rules. At anything I do to Stark Industries is not going to apply to the lab and vice versa, which means my analysis workflows, the way that I go and build these organizations are going to be completely independent of each other. And that's a really, really good approach for security teams out there because it gives you the ability to say, I need to treat my regions differently, or I need to treat my uh, business units differently, or I need to treat my customers differently, or I need to treat uh, my different cases, whatever the division you want to have in place is, organizations get you there really, really fast. The other final thing I'll mention about this, and you'll see me come back to organizations later as kind of a summary point, because we're gonna take a lot of what we learned today and wrap it all up. The other thing I really like about the organizational approach, the multi-tenancy approach here, is that my data does not get coalesced. My data does not cross paths. So if I've got customers, multiple customers, and I've got data uh, residency regions or data residency requirements in place, I do not want to be in a position where as a service provider, I'm coalescing customer data and then using really, if you think about mingling all this data and commingling data, how do we go about separating that? Well, we might tag our data, um, perhaps we'll follow host name conventions, or perhaps we'll just know where things come from really not a good approach. So if you're currently in a spot right now where you're supposed to be multi-tenant, but you're co-mingling data together, it's not going to end up very well. I promise you that. Look for the ability to logically separate things out. All right. But with that said, let's start to walk a little bit through what our organization looks like here. Now I do have the lab kind of set up and running, but this is a brand new clean slate right here. This is our initial organization page. Notice there is nothing coming into here right now. Let's talk about what I mean by nothing. Hopefully you all remember from earlier, one of the biggest things I need you to have and anything that a security program needs to be successful is gonna be telemetry. There's a couple of different ways to get telemetry into Lima Charlie, which for me really means there's actually a couple different types of telemetry. I tell folks all the time with Lima Charlie, there's two categories of, of telemetry for me and at a very, very high level, there's two categories. I think it breaks down further the closer we get to the data. But at a high level, there's two categories of telemetry. The first is what I'm going to call your basic EDR telemetry. For me, that is agent-based. So an installed binary on a system is sending me events about that system in real time. That's EDR class telemetry. It's happening at that moment. 
It's capturing things like network connectivity. It's capturing things like processes being started, logs being written on the system, but it's real time data of what's happening on a system from the viewpoint of an installed agent. That's the most important consideration. You're gonna hear me say agent and sensor somewhat interchangeably, but our sensors actually go a step further. So category one is that system level data, right? Category two is really any other data you wanna send in. Usually that data is going to come in the form of some sort of a log source. We're still gonna bring it into Lima Charlie. We're still gonna use it for the exact same things that we wanna use our system telemetry for. But I always look at those as two different categories because logs are gonna be provided as an output from some sort of determining factor, some sort of a platform. I might be bringing in uh, some cloud provider logs. I might be bringing in logs from an appliance that I can't install an agent or a sensor on necessarily. In real time, I might be bringing logs in from an, a third party application. Notice again, I'm not installing a sensor, but I'm bringing those logs in from a different source. In uh, let's think about historical context. Perhaps I'm using Lima Charlie for historical analysis, meaning again, I'm in an incident response capacity and I've got to bring in tons and tons and mountains of data for analysis. In this case, I'm not looking at live stream data in any capacity whatsoever. I'm looking at historical log sets. Maybe I've got a gig worth of firewall logs over the past six months that I want to import for analysis and detection and response into Lima Charlie. Again, falls for me into that, that other category of log-based data, whether it's from a live streaming source or not, it is an external data set I can bring into the environment. Now in Lima Charlie, I've got these two different high-level types of data. Let's talk about each one and break them down a little bit. So sensors are kind of that initial entry point for telemetry, if you will. Now, sensors that we've got set up, we've got really, again, think about those two high-level categories. When I talk about system-level events, I'm looking for cross-platform support and system parity. One of the things I'm most proud of when I talk about Lima Charlie is the fact that we've got parity across the three major operating systems. And what that really means is I don't have an awesome Windows agent and an okay Linux or Mac agent, which is what you very commonly will see out there. No, I've got an extremely capable Windows, Mac, or Linux agent. I've also got support for, hopefully you can see it here, Chrome OS and Edge. We've got a Docker capability in there as well. Again, telemetry. You are most successful when you can see what's happening and going on inside of the environment. And I think bringing in those operating system events are gonna be some of the most important steps you can take. We've also got support for that external telemetry. There's my second category. I've got samples listed here. This is not the full extent of everything that we can bring in, but I've got some samples. And notice how wide of a bucket this is. We can go everything from kind of cloud provider based logs. So something like GCP logs or Azure logs or AWS logs. Notice that things like an S3 bucket or an Azure event hub can really be as wide or as voluminous as they need to be. We can throw anything inside of those different log sets. So we can go super wide and say, I'm going to install Lima Charlie on my sit on my Windows, Linux and Mac systems on my Chrome OS Chromebooks. And I'm also going to bring in all of my AWS platform logs all into one place. You can also get very targeted and you can say, I'm going to run an incident response across one very particular subnet of an organization. And I'm going to bring in Windows telemetry only, and I'm going to pipe in a few other third party sources, but I don't need a live streaming kind of kitchen sink approach. I need a very targeted approach. It does not matter what you want to bring in. Our adapters, our sensors are built there to help you bring any data set in that you want. Let's talk a little bit about how, what that looks like on this side. So back inside of our organizations, notice we've got no sensors installed at this point. The next thing for you to get familiar with from an architecture perspective are things are our installation keys. Our installation keys are another way. So think about organizations and inside of my organization, my next step of logical assignment is going to be installation keys. Installation keys are what I can use to specify what type of thing am I installing? What type of telemetry am I bringing in? Telema Charlie. So check this out. This is really straightforward. This is what, it, what type of description would you like to use for this key? And would, are there any tags that you'd like to throw for this as well? So our first installation key, let's say we're gonna test it out on our Windows systems or our Linux systems or whatever it might be. I'm gonna call this my Linux workstations. 
And I'm going to drop in a couple of tags here. I'm going to drop in Linux. This is going to be workstations. Uh, this is going to be testing. I'm going to call this inside of my lab. And I'm just going to say that these systems are also hosted in Spain for whatever reason. Watch what happens. We go through and create an installation key. And at this point, I've got a few different things to pay attention to. The first is that description that we defined earlier. And then I've got all of my specific tags lined up. And then I've got three different options. I've got a sensor key, a Chrome key, and then an adapter key. Let's talk about what those three things are. First off, scrolling down, we at the point now where we might need to go and install a sensor or configure a sensor to forward me logs. Remember those two high level categories, installing that EDR class sensor or creating a log forwarder to bring logs into my environment. If I go and install a sensor as an EDR class sensor, meaning I'm getting those live real time system events, that's gonna be this particular installation key right here, sensor key. I'm installing it as an EDR sensor. If I'm installing this particular sensor on a Chromebook, Here's going to be the key that we're going to use in that Chrome setup, that Chrome OS setup. If I'm installing it as an adapter, which means I'm going to point and forward a log source back to the Lima Charlie cloud, I'm going to be using this key here instead. Your installation keys are another way for you to, again, determine and segment what a sensor might be doing on a particular system. The nice thing about this setup here is that I can actually use the same binary the same executable for multiple different functionalities depending on what I need it to do. Again, control, visibility, transparency. Those are the key things that we want you to have capability or we want you to have feature set and functionality around. We do drop some notes in here about connectivity in case anything's gotta be pushed into an allow list of any notes. We also drop in some installation notes. There's some scripts available and things to get into. I am going to, once again, keep this at a discussion perspective and say that we've also got ridiculous support across the EDR perspective for different binaries, depending on what you need. I've got Windows 32 and 64-bit. I've got Windows MSIs. I've got Mac OS support, 64-bit and ARM. I've got Linux 3264, Alpine, ARM, so on and so forth. There's our Docker container installer. And then Chrome and Edge, as I mentioned just a moment ago. Really, I'd be very hard pressed for you to find an operating system that we don't support assuming and i'll throw this one out there for anyone who does it assuming you're not going back to an nt4 server farm and trying to install lima charlie dairy we've got pretty good and wide coverage so with that said uh you'll get really good coverage across really any modern enterprise makeup that you might see these days same deal with adapters if we're going to install an adapter as that log forwarder that third party type of telemetry source the adapter is where that particular install would be set up so let's summarize really quick what we've got I've got an organization created. That's my high level architecture setup. The next thing inside of my organization is I need to configure at least one installation key. That installation key is going to allow a sensor to be installed and then connect back to the Lima Charlie cloud. It's going to tell it where to connect back to. It's going to associate it with a particular organization and it's going to associate it with a bunch of different tags inside of here as well. Now these tags will become useful as we move a little bit deeper into the platform capabilities and it's something you'll see me talk about in additional parts for this kind of getting started series as well. But let's say we've gone and installed a sensor, we've utilized an installation key, and now we wanna know what that telemetry looks like. So I hopped over to another organization I've set up, the one called The Lab. You saw this in my initial setup here. And The Lab is just another organization I've got. It again, gives me different capabilities, different feature sets, depending on what types of configuration options I put in. And I'll talk about those in just a moment, but I've installed a sensor on a Linux workstation that I've got set up and running. Now notice my sensor list now, of course, is gonna look a little bit different because I've actually got something installed. Take a look, without any sensors, the platform's very helpful and wants to help you install sensors. We've created installation keys. There's plenty of documentation available in here. Once you have a sensor installed, things start to look a little bit different. We actually see a report from that sensor. Any tags I've associated with it will be evident as well. We see whether or not it's online. We also see if it's on network or if it's been isolated. Any time you install a sensor or set a sensor up, you will see it check back into Lima Charlie. And folks, I'm not kidding when I tell you this, it is a matter of seconds for those agents to check in. Very, very quick do we get representation. They start pulling data and pulling things back in immediately. This is that first category of telemetry type, that EDR type. And I'm gonna spend probably the rest of today talking about this. 
So a couple of different things to note. I do get an overview for the sensor, but I usually like dropping folks here into our timeline so you can see exactly what's going on here, what this looks like. So of all the system telemetry that's being brought in, our timeline is one of the most important types of uh, data feed, one of the most important data feeds that you'll see, because this is your real millisecond by millisecond thing of what's happening on that particular system. Now, let me pause and talk about why this is. For anyone who may be newer to a security analyst role or maybe new to kind of a SOC analyst role, you may not be too familiar with this approach. But for the longest time, one of the things that we would do when it came to security analysis is we would take multiple different types of artifacts, parse and combine them together to be able to perform an analysis on what happened. For example, and I use this one quite a lot, if you came to me and said there was a car accident and we need to investigate that car accident, I would wanna know what happened before. I would wanna know what happened afterwards. I would wanna understand what are all the things that led up to and happened after this particular event so I can make the most informed decision about what happened and took place. An alert inside of your environment is the exact same thing. Now notice we haven't generated any alerts yet. We haven't played around with detection and response just yet. All we've done is set up an organization and get our first sensor installed. We've got those two things coming in, but the platform is already gearing you towards, excuse me, already gearing you towards that security approach that I know that you're gonna wanna understand more about your environment. And that's exactly what our sensor list is set up to help you to do. So our timeline here is all of the different live events that are happening on that particular system. Notice we've got a lot of different new processes here. It looks like there's all sorts of something happening because it's just repetitive CP, make dir, make dir, dir name, so on and so forth. And there's really a lot of different things happening on this system right now. I'd actually be curious to know exactly what's going on. Maybe some updates or something are happening back there. But let's take a look at this kind of second by second approach as to what's happening here. So we've got some code identity events. We've got some new process events. We've got some terminate process events. If I go over here to our event filters, you'll see at a high level category, the different types of things. And I say things, but these are events happening on your endpoints. Everyone, this is where you start to understand what's going on inside of your environment. So I tend to back up a little bit and paint the picture of what's, being, of what's happening here. This is a Linux system. This Linux system is running. It is an Ubuntu system in particular. It is running and doing things which means there are commands being issued. There are potentially users interacting with it. Uh, maybe there's applications or services being hosted on it. Whatever the functionality of that system is, it is going back and it is just running. It is doing its thing. And I'm gonna try and see if I can't force a little something to, uh, to take place here as this is happening. Um, but let's see, I'm going to kick off an LS command. I'm actually remoted into the system on the side and I am going to go ahead and run a few different commands on the back end because I want to see what this looks like. So I went ahead and ran an update command for this particular system, meaning I want to update the different packages. And I'm then going to also upgrade those packages as well. And all I'm doing is normal system maintenance on the background. But this is going to cause all sorts of activity to happen on the system. It's downloading files, it's installing things, it's removing files, it's creating all sorts of noise on that particular system. And we're gonna let our timeline sync up and capture a lot of that noise as time goes on. All right, so that's our timeline. Now, I will say, and I don't wanna go into this one too much, but I will say over in our documentation are all the different types of things, the different types of telemetry that you'll be able to see on your different systems, all the different types of operating system events that take place or system events that take place. And there's a whole lot of them. There is network connectivity. There is file actions, directory actions. There are memory operations that can take place. There are in a Windows or Linux environment, there are service changes that can take place. There are events such as the Windows system starting up or not Windows, excuse me, the system starting up, shutting down. Uh, establishing a network connection, shutting down a network connection. There's additional steps such as mounting volumes, unmounting volumes. I'm not going to read every single one, but I want you to think about all the different things that a system might do, all the different things that a system might do during normal operations 
And I'm going to tell you right now, that is going to be the type of visibility that you want into your environment to be able to make decisions about what's happening here, about the things that are going on, the different types of things that we want to see. And sure enough, there's my commands taking place. Look at this stream of events happening, and I'm going to try and hover across a few of these, but this is me running that update command and look at what my environment looks like. This is going through Python updates, dpackage, which is an installation or a package helper, aptitude helper running, process termination, different files being, uh, network connections being set up, user process information. The point here, everyone, I'm not gonna walk through every single step, but the point here is, what did we achieve with our platform just now? Visibility. I wanna see what's happening in my environment. I wanna see the different things that a system is doing because now we get to apply that security context to it because if i can see what's happening on my system well then i can start to say well what's user what's normal if you will and what's abnormal what's not what is potentially legitimate what is potentially malicious and the next step that we're going to want to do inside any platform like lima charlie is we're going to want to start to use it to help us find what's malicious what's suspicious what doesn't fit here what doesn't belong versus what belongs here, what's legitimate, and what would I expect to see? And that is the whole purpose of a detection and response platform. Now, I'm going to walk into detections in just a moment, but before I get there, I want to bring up a couple other sensor functionalities that some of you may have been seeing if you're kind of staring off against this. Now, I'm going to make a note. We do not drill down too much in this very first session into how to parse and go through and analyze the different types of telemetry that will come through a system. I'll make sure in our next or third series, or sorry, third edition of this particular series, we're gonna be covering a lot more of those details. So if you're kind of thinking, Matt, you're leaving me at this, at this, at this uh, telemetry stage, I wanna know more about those different events. Well, now you have a reason to come back because you know what we'll have the next one for us. A couple other things I want to highlight from a sensor perspective. Again, visibility, control, transparency. There are some things I can pull from my system that I, I tend to call as kind of like default things I would want to see. Uh, maybe I want to go down and drill into process listings for a particular system and I want to figure out what's running. Uh, maybe I want to jump into network connections for that particular system. Notice we've got only a few connections on this one. Basically me SSH'd in and the sensor communicating back out. We've got a file system browser, so I can actually use this to navigate through my file system if I want to. Again, another way to interact with that particular system. So if we were curious about what's inside of the temp folder, what types of things have been seen on the system, maybe I've got an inkling about where some suspicious files are showing up, um, we could use this as another way to move through the environment, or sorry, move through my sensors. Last but not least, I like to always kind of categorize this one as a very useful thing for folks to have. But again, it is not kind of the, um, you know, it, it is not like a super user power necessarily, but we do have an abstracted console built into Lima Charlie. And this console is a way for you to interact directly with that specific system. It is not a free for all, uh, you know, command prompt or PowerShell or Linux terminal prompt. It is abstracted away again, I can do some of the exact same things, right? I might want to jump a, I might want to generate a directory listing for a particular system or a particular location. I might want to issue that out. Maybe I want to run an ad hoc Yara scan or something like that. We'll talk about all those, all these things in this session and the next one. But your console is the way for you to interact with a single system individually to make it do a certain thing or to get certain data points back. You might have noticed we just illustrated a big funnel in Lima Charlie. We started out at that big organization level. We then moved down to the installation keys. My organization is my overall data residency, my overall data configuration. My installation key becomes kind of system grouping, if you will, the way that I might logically group systems inside of an organization, all the way down to a specific system. And in this case, we're dealing specifically with that Ubuntu 22 Linux workstation. Did you all see how we walked through that funnel in one big place? Organization, all the way down to single system. As a security team, I might want to apply my logic or my customer's logic at different levels of that particular funnel or different levels of that hierarchy. So maybe there's things that I want to apply at an organizational level. Let's, again, revisit that. Maybe I need all my data to be stored in the EU or the UK or the US or India or Canada. 
maybe I need all of my systems inside of an organization, regardless of what type of system they are to communicate back to a particular location or communicate back to a particular data residency region. Or maybe I want all of my systems inside of that particular organization to be in incident response mode. We can also go the other side of that. Lima Charlie, we also have something called sleeper mode, which is a way for you to install the agent with very minimal footprint, very minimal network traffic and turn it on when you need to turn it on. We'll talk about that one in a later session. We've got some great resources for that too. But I wanna illustrate that a high level funnel is everything. And then we get down to the installation key perspective. Installation keys, you can create and install as many as you want to, for sure. But one thing that I like to remind a lot of folks about is your installation keys become that next logical grouping, that next logical grouping of things that you'd wanna see, meaning ways you'd wanna represent different systems. And I've got some setups here. I've got an installation key for my Chromebooks. I've got an installation key for my lab workstations, and I've got an installation key for my Linux lab workstations. Admittedly, the second one should probably be Windows lab workstations just to keep it consistent, but that is my next level of grouping. I do not, in my environment, want to treat Linux workstations the same way I treat Windows workstations. You know why? My detection rules are different. The way the operating systems are built are different the way that the users interact with the operating systems, the way that the environment or the way that the organization or the way that the customer uses those systems are different, where they're hosted, where they're physically present, or if they're virtual systems is another classification I would use. Long story short, the further we get into an environment, the more I wanna logically separate and set things out so I can treat them differently as a security team or from a security approach. Again, I'm going to treat, and I'm talking from a security perspective, I'm going to treat Linux systems differently than Windows systems because they're inherently different. And as I mentioned earlier, users and the enterprise use them differently as well. And then last but not least, at the bottom of that funnel is our individual sensor approach. This is where, as a security analyst, I might want to treat this system different from the other ones out there. Maybe this system has got an active piece of malware running on it. Maybe there's a user running, a user using this system who I want to nah, limit and curb what they're able to do because they're a malicious user or it's an account that's been stolen and being used maliciously. Perhaps I'd like to separate this particular system from the network, which is an, a response action that we've got. When we talk about detection and response rules, you'll see me drill into this one a little bit further. But maybe I want to segregate this system from the network. Again, a very personal system by system action. I don't want to apply this across an entire tag set, but I might want to do this against one, two, three systems who I'm actively investigating or needing to drill down into further. So that's the funnel of how you would set up an organization down to sensor installation for Lima Charlie. And the nice thing, or I should say, the thing that I like the most about this setup is it forces you to think about how you would structure your environment in ways you would break things out. And what I see happen, and some of you might be familiar with this, what I see happen with other types of tool sets and other types of arrangements is you go and install the agent or the sensor or the check-in or whatever it might be everywhere, and then you classify later inside of the platform. The problem with that is you're treating everything as the exact same type of sensor and then cleaning up or specifying or dropping the particulars in after the fact. Folks, we don't have that much time. What I mean by that is if I install systems on a Linux sensor, I'm sorry, if I install sensors on Linux systems and I install sensors on a Windows systems, I need my EDR sensor, my agent, acting as if immediately. And that's what our installation keys help you do. And that's what that organizational approach helps you do is it lets you determine ahead of time, how do you want these sensors to act? Let's classify that up front. And then the moment that installation happens, boom, we're rocking and rolling. We've got detection and response rules working. We've got telemetry flowing in. We're able to perform the different types of analysis that we would want to perform against that type of system, which means I'm not waiting for my platform to help figure out what's what it's configured ahead of time and now we're moving. Now I've got telemetry flowing in. I've got signals that I can start to work off of. I've got insight into that system without even thinking twice about it. I can start to drill down into that system if need be. My platform, my agent, if you will, my sensor is immediately usable for my security team, all in a matter of seconds. 
And I want to note for everyone, by the way, I installed this sensor right before this webcast started. So it may feel like it's been a long time, but all of the data started flowing in about three to four seconds after I kicked off the service and, and got the sensor running. And since then, it's just kind of been sitting in the background waiting for me to do things. I may have been talking about it for about 50 minutes, but it's actually been, uh, you know, about three minutes or so total of actual work for the sensor on the back end, just streaming data up and down. But it is fast. It is real time. All right. So the one of the main things I wanted to illustrate today was that overall funnel approach. We've got about six or seven minutes left in our webcast for today. Now, everyone remember, this is a multi-part series. Part one focused on that installation side of things. The other little thing I want to start to get into is ways to start to detect across the different types of telemetry that are being brought in. In a very, very simple form, that is done at the detections phase. But let's talk really briefly about this. And this is going to be a good segue into our next session, which is going to focus very heavily on detection and response rules. But let me back up and let's once again revisit that initial concept that I talked to everyone about at the beginning, which is telemetry. It's visibility. With great power comes great responsibility. We all know where that's from. I hope you know where that's from. If not, you have some really interesting Marvel history homework to go do. But if I've got all this telemetry coming into my environment, I've got cross-platform support, I've got logs of third-party log applications, I've got cloud providers, virtualized applications, whatever it might be flowing into my organization here. The next thing I'm gonna wanna do is use this platform to help find what belongs here and what does not belong here. And over in our automation section, you're going to find our DNR rules or our detection and response rules. And I'm going to bring up the documentation for this and have it just on the back end, just to talk about here in just a moment. But you might notice I've already got 702 detection response rules built out here. Now, here's one of my favorite parts about Lima Charlie. I haven't clicked on this add-ons button yet, and it's going to be the focus of a future session that we're going to go through. But the other thing that we've done in this platform is made it extremely extensible and interoperable with various open source things. You're going to see me talk about that in just a moment. Various open source resources that are out there. One of them being Sigma, the Sigma rule set, which I hope everyone is familiar with. If not, go check it out and I'll drop some links into the Slack after this webinar. But a, the Sigma rule set is an open source rule set that's been created. It's really a way to approach detecting malicious activity across various types of system events and log events. We've got integrated Sigma, or I should say, we've got a Sigma integration built into Lima Charlie. It's actually set up right down here. You can see where Sigma has been turned on. And if I hop over into our add-ons, and our add-ons is our marketplace, if you will, not everything costs money, but it is our marketplace for lack of a better term. And you've noticed that I've gone ahead and set up and subscribed to Sigma rules. Remember those organizations we talked about a little bit earlier? This is once again, where organizations come into play. This is where that funnel comes into play. Detection and response rules are something that I'm going to apply at the organizational level. I do not necessarily want to exclude one subset of systems from detecting malicious activity compared to another subset of systems. We will talk in a future session about ways you can do that. But detection and response rules and various services are going to be applied at the organizational level at the start. The nice thing about this is I can create that organization. I can go enable something like Sigma rules. And everyone, before I've installed a single agent, I already have an environment with detection and response rules built in, an extremely customizable platform, an amazing way to categorize all the agents that I'm going to be installing out there. And then the moment that telemetry starts to come in, Sigma and my various rule sets are starting to do their own thing. They're starting to do their work. I will notice that it is not just the Sigma set that's out there. We've also got a really awesome integration with Snap Attack. Sock Prime, and then Soteria, an awesome organization that we do a lot of work with. They also have a managed rule set that is available for a subscription fee as well. Matt, what does all this mean for me? Well, what this means, everyone, is all I've done is installed one sensor, and I've said to myself, I want to start to find some malicious activity inside of this environment. How would I go about creating those detection and response rules? Or is there a resource of detection and response rules out there that I can just bring in and import? And here it is. Yes, there is, is the easy answer for that. And I can turn on these different rule sets and watch this. I can go here and say, I want to subscribe to the Snap Attack Community Edition. 
And what this is gonna do is it's gonna turn on that rule set inside of my tenant. Right now, inside of this tenant, the only thing that I have set up from a detection and response perspective is 702 Sigma rules. Maybe I want more, or maybe I have a really strong feeling or I like the fidelity inside of the snap attack rules. Fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and click subscribe. The lab organization, the one that I've been sitting in for quite a while now, is now subscribed to the snap attack rules. So on the back end, what's going to happen is that Lima Charlie tenant, that organization is going to be updated to bring in those snap attack rules on top of the Sigma rules that I've got created and generated. And guess what? I am now sitting on an organization with one sensor installed, but hundreds of detection and response rules written ready to go. So the next sensor that I go and install, the next sensor that I install after that, the N plus one sensors that I install after everything here on out, the moment that telemetry starts to check in, it's already being analyzed for potentially malicious activity. And I think that's a really awesome way for security teams out there, whether you're a managed security provider or an enterprise security team to just hit the ground running, bring in agents, automatically have detection and response rules waiting for you and automatically start to identify malicious activity in the environment really with hopefully everyone's kind of been paying attention as I walk through this four or five button clicks. And that's as much as we did. We could of course increase that frequency by subscribing to all sorts of different rules and services. But as I mentioned, we're going to cover add-ons in much more details in a subsequent session. All right. I'm going to pause us and leave us right here from today's webcast detection and response rules is where we're going to pick up the next session that we have and i'm leaving here for a reason because we're going to spend an entire hour next time on just detection and response rules false positive rules and ways to identify malicious activity inside of your environment but let's recap from today first off we talked about setting up your first organization and then understanding how to install sensors and the different levels of architecture when it comes to sensor installation Remember that funnel that I painted at the top is your organization. This is every system under that organization. We then have the ability to customize via installation keys. And I can use that to denote operating system, dev, prod, test, uh, geographic regions if I want. Um, I can use them any sort of customization. You can drop in any tags that you want. And then once a sensor is installed and checking in, I then have per sensor capabilities, things I can do on just one system. So that funnel works the other way as well. And we'll talk about that, how to use that from an investigative and a security analysis perspective in one of our future sessions. But with that said, thank you everyone for joining today. But before you hang up, before you go, I wanna let you know that Lima Charlie is going to be out and about in the next few months. Uh, we recorded this webcast on March 21st. So if you're seeing this after that, note that some of these events might've passed. But first and foremost, I recommend you do come and check us out. We'll be at RSA in April in San Francisco this year. We're also gonna be out at ThoughtCon in Chicago. And we are also going through and putting together a, our own Lima Charlie conference as well called Mission Control. And you're gonna see links for these dropped into our community Slack. They're gonna be dropped into the uh, chat for the um, presentation for the webinar that we're going through right now. So if you see us, if you're at any of those events, and I'm sure we'll probably be at a few more as well, but if you're at any of those events or you see us around, feel free to come up, say hi, come talk to the Lima Charlie team. But for now, here's what I want you to go do. Go and grab some, uh, grab some credentials, sign up and log into the Lima Charlie platform, start to play around with sensors, get them installed and start to build, start to create and start to find really what it is your security program needs. And I promise you, we'll be able to help you deliver on it. All right. With that said, everyone, thank you for joining our first session. I will see you again for our next Lima Charlie 101 session. It's been a pleasure. See you again soon. Thanks.